this exercise it was very was very important for Cornavio because we don't have full species lists for most of these areas, either the natural protected areas and the, poten uh, the potential and the IBAS, the potentially protected areas. So what we did was make a query saying that we want to know how many species and which species are present potentially in each of these areas, and it was a very successful, successful exercise. Well, as you see, we have been we 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 have been constructing a database that that has been used in, in many ways. We have found many applications relevant to the salute, diversity, and conservation of Mexican birds. Now you're hungry, and then you have to after after lunch, please have a good lunch, have a coffee. I will have a tea or whatever. And later, the day is advancing, so you don't have to listen to me much after lunch. We'll, we'll do some, I will show you some, some kinds of, of exercises that we can perform to look at the species richness and endemism data, and then suggest you a small exercise to complement what you started yesterday. Thanks, see you after lunch. Any questions? Everything is okay in your houses, in your Facebook, your friends are okay? <laughs> Okay, guys, thanks for listening so much to Birds of Mexico stuff. I was trying to prepare an example using Birds of Mexico, but I decided to change. I'm using butterflies from Mexico as, as an example. No, no, my, my joke didn't, didn't work out because, <laughs> because I don't have the map over there. But the really good thing is that by the end of today, no more Mexico. It's going to be all Brazil. All Brazil. <laughs> okay. Can you believe this? I have a map of Africa right on, in front of you. What I, what I did for, the, for uh, working on this example is to pull out from the databases that you were provided all the data on birds of Africa. So essentially, what I do, what I do have here in this know how to do things in our view as, as usual if you have another systems you can easily export the, the type of analysis we want to do I have a, a homework this homework that you are doing is a homework that Tiago wants you to have because for working with the, with the diversity patterns and the macroecology he wants to have species lists the, the, the species richness for the taxon you're having. What is the first biodiversity pattern that emerged from this data set? So there are no birds in South Africa. No. It is, it's just really, really interesting the, that we pulled out all the data from, from Africa. I, I want to show you a uh, more or less easy way to generate maps of species richness based on one of the one of attributes that we, we can that we can pull out using a geographic information system I, I'm, I'm gonna we, we have three things to do so Thiago will not be mad with me you have to do your authority file that is you have to have 
pulled out from the, your database and from the taxon you choose all the species list and then construct a file, an accessory file that in access or in the database you are managing that contains all the information that you want to classify your species with endemism, endangerment, whatever, whatever reason. This, this, they, this authority file should be treated as a different table within your database and has to be joined through one field, I, I will do a, a little example later. So that, that, that is the way that we can make queries in which we can work with all, this, with all the species list that we have in our database, or we can pull out just chunks and small pieces of a specialized kind of species that we want, we want to map and we want to analyze. Okay, so this is the full list of African birds. We have, what I obtained for doing this database was a query in which I only have in my database the unique combinations of name and latitude longitude data. So this way I was able to get rid of all the zeros, of all the NAs and everything. So it's a, it's a combination of unique records. And as you see, it sounds like it's pretty well georeferenced. No, no major problems seems to be here. One, one country that nobody wants to do. Okay, this is Cameroon. This, I'm asking, eh? <laughs> is, is this Cameroon? Okay. Once we have a, our, our data, we want to generate maps of the species richness patterns. What I want to do is generate a, in, in, this, in this exercise, and you can do it by any, any theme that you want as uh, is available, I want to generate a map of squares in which we want to plot the number of species of birds plotted in each one. So what I do here in our view is obtain a grid from this tool that is, ge that is generate a grid. So you, you, so you see, I want to generate a polygon. And here it is. My, my, my units are degrees, the projection are projected. I want to generate a grid that is one degree latitude one degree longitude, well, is, is, uh, x is longitude, y is latitude, and I want to see it. This, this tool is very useful because it depends on the re degree of resolution you want to, to have for your data, the, de the, the, size of the, the, the size of the squares. Of course, it took a lot of machine time and machine memory to generate uh, richnesses with a long, uh, large number of squares. So for uh, purposes of the example, I will use one, one, one degree squares. And then I will tell the program convert the grid to shape. Okay, because this is Camero grid. So this way, now I have this grid as a, as a shape file that is integrated to my view in our view, okay? Behind that is the map. For the moment, I want it with a color. One thing I, I want to do is I want to ask the system about how, 
how many species and which species are contained into each square. So what I do is go to the analysis, the analysis menu, and select tabulate areas. Tabulate areas generates a square query in which I, 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 I am able to pull out the values for a series of rows and columns. In this case, he's asking me which one you want to have as a row theme. And the row theme, it's going to be the grid. The grid is a, it's a shape. Like I, I'm, I'm doing again. I'm canceling this. It's a shape that has values. Once, when, once you generate this, this grid, it has values. Let, let me show you. I'm going to... You see? So automatically adds... Okay. That's an ID that each, each square has. So that's going to be the values that, uh, that I want to add in my table when I, when I pull the data. OK. Now let's go to the analysis. Tabulate areas. My row theme will be the grid. So I want the values of, of, each, of, uh, each, of if each square on the grid. And my column theme is my database of species. So he will, he will, the, the, the system will take values for each of the species. This is the field. Same at display because I'm, I'm, I'm working in this, uh, in this piece of the map. And what I have is this. You see, here's the, 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 the value of the grid. And in each cell that has data, the value will be different from zero. The thing is, this, this thing is tabulating the presence of the data, but also the density of the data. So if you, if you have three points of the same species of five or one, it gives you di different values. But I, we don't want that. What we want is a value of presence, absence, that's, that, that is one or zero. So I'm going to export this table. Are you follow Everybody's following me? Am I being clear? What I'm sure is when they make the criticism of the course, they say, send the Mexican guy to English classes. <laughs> huh? We can all. Please. I, I will need some money to go back to Mexico. Okay. 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 I can. If I don't succeed in this, I will have to stay here in South Africa teaching Spanish classes to survive. Okay? Okay. So I am exporting the table. Let, let me get rid of the, like the limited text to 